Stranger Fruit, a film about the shooting of Michael Brown, premiered at South by Southwest, and to create some buzz, the filmmaker Jason Pollock released a clip from the film that suggests that Michael Brown didn't rob a store just minutes before the shooting, and that the whole thing was a misunderstanding. Let's take a look at the clip. One night when reading through the St. Louis County investigation papers, I stumbled along something that was absolutely stunning. At approximately 1.13 a.m. August 9th, a male arrived as a backseat passenger in a dark colored passenger vehicle. Brown enters and exits the front doors. Brown enters and exits the front doors? Michael was at the market at 1.13 a.m. the night before he died? Camera 7. The male proceeds to the beverage cooler, selected unknown items, and proceeded to the register. The male remains at the counter and eventually leaves the area of the registers with no merchandise. I couldn't believe what I had read. Michael was in the store the night before he died. And St. Louis County saw the videotape. And they didn't tell us. No, they did tell us that they saw the videotape because it was in the report. A report which is public record and could be found in a simple Google search. Well, guess what, St. Louis County? I've got the videotape. Well, guess what, St. Louis County? This guy sounds like he's insane. And it should be of no surprise that he's a protege of Michael Moore, which is why he's putting himself front and center in the documentary. I stumbled along something that was absolutely stunning. I couldn't believe what I had read. I've got the videotape. I, 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 what a fucking narcissist. I was surprised to hear that two years later, there was a video. What you're going to see on this video is what they didn't show us happened that clarifies that there was an understanding. And that's what you're going to see in that video. In the early hours of August 9th, just 11 hours before Mike took his last steps, he went to his local convenience store to make an exchange. Look carefully at the counter and you can see a trade is made. Mike gives the store a little bag of weed. You can see the employees smelling it and passing it around. So Michael Brown was attempting a drug trade? Oh yeah, that's a much better narrative. Then you can clearly see Mike being given two big boxes of cigarillos. The store clerk puts the cigarillos into a bag for Mike with his other stuff and hands it over the counter. Mike is about to leave the store, but decides to have the clerk hold his things behind the counter for him. So to recap, Michael Brown was driven to a store, traded some weed for two beverage items and cigarillos, and left the items at the store for them to hold? Right. There was some type of exchange for one thing for another. That these people know each other well enough that this is the relationship that they have. What relationship? Everyone's body language in the clip would suggest that they aren't particularly friendly. The clerks don't even acknowledge him when he walks into the store. If they knew each other, then why was there no homie handshake before or after this supposed transaction took place? The next day, with his hands politely behind his back, Mike goes back into the store to get his stuff. It was a misunderstanding. St. Louis County has written documentation that we found which shows they saw the 1.13 a.m. videotape, but they leave out what really happened that night in their report. Mike traded the store a little bag of weed and got two boxes of cigarellos in return. He left his items at the store and he went back the next day to pick them up. Mike did not rob the store. So now that you've seen the clip, let's take a look at the raw footage and see what Jason Pollock left out. Mike Brown gets out of the backseat of a passenger vehicle and enters the market. Note that Brown is holding a piece of paper in his right hand. Remember that for later. He walks inside, heads towards the beverage coolers, and picks out two items and heads to the counter. At the counter, Clerk A puts the beverages into a black bag. Then Clerk A starts to grab smaller packages of cigarillos, but then reaches for two large boxes instead. Then Mike Brown reaches into his pocket and puts what appears to be a small bag of weed on the counter. Clerk B picks up the bag and smells it. Then Clerk C picks it up, smells it, puts it back in the counter, and puts his hands behind his back. Notice that the bag is not in Clerk B's hand. Clerk A puts the black bag with the beverages into a larger white bag, then puts the cigarellas in it then places the bag on the counter. 
there seems to be some kind of conversation, possibly a disagreement. Clerk A appears agitated. Look at his leg. And then look at his hands pointing to the door. He makes multiple gestures with his hand, like he's saying no. Mike Brown grabs the bag and starts to walk away. The clerks tell him to bring the unpaid merchandise back to the counter. He turns around and puts the bag back onto the counter, which is immediately grabbed by Clerk A and put on the floor behind the counter. Mike Brown is still holding the piece of paper in one hand and now the little bag of weed is in the other. The clerks look like they're trying to ignore him while Brown looks like he's pleading with them and is pretty animated with his hands. He eventually gets the hint and walks away. The paper is in his right hand and the small bag of weed is in his left. Then we see Clerk A behind the register moving his hands around looking a little agitated. He then reaches for the bag, takes the two boxes out of it, restocks the boxes, then places the beverages on the counter for an other clerk to restock. Pollux claims that the items were put behind the counter for the employees to hold is impossible. If it were true, the clerk wouldn't have taken the items out of the bag and put them back on the shelf. And furthermore, there was no reason for Brown to leave the items behind. He could have put them in the backpack he was wearing, and he was also in a car, so it's not like he couldn't carry them home. The worst part about this whole thing is that the media took the clip at face value. New footage suggests Michael Brown made drug deal before shooting death. New video footage could counter police narrative that Michael Brown robbed Ferguson's store. 10 hours before 18-year-old Michael Brown was seen taking a pack of cigarettes and pushing a convenience store clerk in Ferguson, Missouri, he allegedly sold another clerk at the store some marijuana in exchange for the pack. Thanks to Pollock's dropping of a major bombshell in the form of additional surveillance footage that had evidently been suppressed by Ferguson police, the film may even generate traction in efforts calling upon the Department of Justice to reopen Brown's case. If anyone in the media covering the Michael Brown shooting were worth their salt, they would have read the report which mentioned that Brown was in the market in the hours before he died and reported on it two years ago. Seriously, do a custom Google search. Not one news outlet mentions that fact before March 2017. Ultimately, it doesn't matter that Michael Brown was in the market. He wasn't shot by Officer Darren Wilson for robbing a store. Wilson shot Brown in self-defense after Brown attacked him. Based on the evidence, the FBI and the Department of Justice have both come to this conclusion. But for Jason Pollock, alternative facts. 40 FBI agents went to Ferguson to investigate yeah. this case yeah. at the behest yeah. of Eric Holder, who showed up almost immediately after it happened. I, I yeah. think it's fair to assume that they really believed that they were going to be able to indict Officer Wilson, that he had acted no, wrongly. No, I don't think that that's, I don't think that that's, there, uh, that's okay, not, that's right, absolutely that not then. true. Throw not that true. Out, right, don't look, just say that. No, you're just saying plenty of things. So let me just, Those FBI let me just throw agents, one thing. The, the FBI agents went down there. Eric Holder went down there. To indict express, Darren Wilson? To well, indict I, Darren Wilson? It, no way. You know how the system works. These cops get off every single time. And for 23 years, matter, which, excuse me, let me just finish this. Let me just finish this. For 23 years, according to the Washington Post, there has not been a prosecution of a single police shooting in St. Louis County. So you every believe, you believe, hold one on, of them, now it's my Every turn. single now one it's, of them, none down. of them are, 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 are indictable? It's my turn. You're, you're, gonna, you're suggesting that 40 FBI agents were all I'm in I'm suggesting the Department to make of Justice sure failed. That, that, that they this did, yeah, person they failed. was they not failed. indicted. Listen to me. They failed. Michael was in the store 10 hours before he was handed two boxes of cigarellos in the store. You think it's a coincidence that 10 hours later he went in the store and asked for the boxes of cigarellos that he was handed? Come on. Oh, come this on. Is, you, you know anything about Americas. evidence? If you're going to be in America, listen, if you're going to be the man no, who's going to do a right, film on, on something let's like let's this, this you point. better know exactly Harry. what the evidence is right. that you're talking about, not assumptions. Look at the, the video. Work, Look we can at talk the video. There are no evidence of anything in that robbery still occurring. All right, Caesar. Harry. Continue we, your white supremacy. We have your on this take, era. Jason. Continue your white Jason. supremacy. Jason, oh, I'm a white Jason. supremacist. Jason, it looks ridiculous. Thank Jason, you. thank you. Yeah, he seems credible. Get what I know is that there was, an, there, was a, there were three different forensic yet. investigations that were done. 
that showed that he was care. shot in the they front. They failed him. Everyone they in the failed. country was told they this narrative failed. that he was shot in the back. They all failed. You, you, know you know how many black men are in jail right now? You know how many black men are in jail right now for nothing? For nothing? Because the Department of Justice failed them? You, you know, know how many black men are in jail right now? Don't touch, I, I tell me because they closed the book on it. We're okay. My film will show the public the truth, ma'am. And if you want to know the truth, you should watch it. Yeah, okay.